Today I am going to show you how I painted this Aquashella themed marine painting and share a bit about my experience at Aquashella Chicago. If you are not interested in the actual Aquashella event, you can skip ahead here to where we get started with the painting. Aquashella is basically a big convention for both fresh and saltwater fish. They have some other animals there as well. Oh my gosh, that planet tank is gorgeous. Also, look at this. Oh wait, not this one. No, I mean, look at that too. It's pretty. This, oh, this terrarium is in my future. I have to have one of those. It is stunning. I'm super excited for someday when I save up enough to get one. I think orchids would be, or a orchid will be perfect for that. So anyway, moving on to the actual event. I was recording before the event started on this day because it gets packed and I am missing a bunch of footage. I cannot find one of the SD cards, but I've got a new Aquashella painting I've got to share soon of the glow snail. So I hopefully will find the missing SD card by then. But as you can see, full of dry goods, you can also get fish, coral. I mean, this event has everything. And you find stuff that it can be a bit hard to find, like for me anyway, at my local stores, like branches that I want for my terrarium. I have a really hard time finding shapes that I, I really want, but it, well, it's in the footage I'm missing actually. They had this one vendor there with the biggest selection of branches for terrariums or aquariums. It's amazing. Look at these guys. These are the oddest looking alien fish. I believe they're called flower horns. They're freshwater. I don't know a lot about freshwater, but they were pretty cool. They seem to have a lot of personality. And we have some freshwater plants from Dustin's fish tanks. These are the plants that I have, or I got them from him last year, or the last, I guess it was technically still this year, the last Aquashella in Dallas. And I really, 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 really like his plants. Luckily, my local fish store that I shop at carries his stuff. So uh, when once we move and I make some adjustments to my Betas tank, I'm definitely going to be purchasing some more of those beautiful plants in such good condition. I'll put a link to some of the people that I'm mentioning in the video description. There were a lot of artists there. This guy's stuff, I'm clearly having problems at this point with my gimbal, but this guy's stuff, oh my gosh, there's a ceiling. Hi ceiling. Good job editing this too, Lisa. Instead of editing, I'm just going to talk over it. So this guy's stuff is phenomenal. It's really like glittery and shiny and Oh my gosh, his work is amazing. He was at the Dallas Aquashella too. Absolutely amazing. Have some more vendors. And here is where my beta came from last year. This is Ben's Betas and More. I'm actually gonna be working on his logo here soon. But look at all those betas. By the way, if you have a beta, get him a fish tank with a heater and a filter and stuff. They're not supposed to live in a cup. Just because something can live in a cup doesn't mean it should. Don't be a jerk get your fish a real tank. Anyway, moving on, we've got, again, more artists. Look at all of all of this. And I didn't even film, guys, well, I filmed it, I'm just missing it. A bunch of the booths. Here is Michelle from Bombshell Creations. All of this glows under a black light, which is, look, another Aquashella logo, but really, really pretty. I mean, it just stands out so, so much. And it works really well for people who have certain blue lights on their first, their fish tanks or their saltwater aquariums. This work will just glow. So pretty cool. There's Michelle. Michelle actually did the installation, which we'll head over to in a second. We've got some more coral. This was right across from my booth. So I got to enjoy this all weekend long. This is Take It Easy. They are a fish store, our local fish store in Chicago. So if you're in that area, I would definitely recommend checking them out. They had these anemones that were just stunning. I think they were calling them, what was it? Chicago sunburst or something. I just screwed up whatever it was being called. They were beautiful. Now we have the, there were two main parts of the installation. Here is the saltwater section, which is really neat to walk through can't even imagine how much work it was. I've never done an art installation and seen how much work goes involved makes me think, no, I never want to do one, but I have so much respect for anyone who does this kind of work. Wow. It was just such a neat atmosphere to be in this room. Next, we have the freshwater installation. This was created by Michelle of Bombshell Creations, the artist you met just a moment ago. Oh my gosh, the work involved in this is incredible. 
I, it, it just blo like it doesn't you can't capture it on video you'd have you have to be in the room to completely get the feel of being surrounded by all of this just absolutely beautiful installation bunch of little fish she painted and hung some glowfish those guys are really cool if you look up how glowfish were created very very neat fish not the same as painted gla glass fish when i used to think that that's all that it was because that was actually very inhumane the way that painted gla glass fish were were done but the glowfish really pretty cool you should look up the information on that i tell it to you but i apparently am just going to stumble all over my words and probably give you misinformation so just something you should research here was a pond they actually had a pond in this room the little water fountains there were fish in the pond somewhere that I don't think I filmed but yeah absolutely gorgeous and I'm probably making it out to sound better than what you're seeing here just because when you're in the room it's a very different feel than my really really bad filming job so I just can't say enough about this if you ever get a chance to go to an Aquashella event definitely recommend it 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 is so so much fun there's so much to see whether you like fresh or salt water or art um really really fun event okay i'm done rambling now and i will have on the next dr shola video i'll see if i can find the footage that i'm missing if you are supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over where you've got the two-hour version of this demonstration available for you now. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon, for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my weekly one to two, sometimes three hour long tutorials. Plus, when you sign up, you get instant access to over 200 that I have available now. That is a whole lot of art lessons for not very much. I will put a link in the description to where you can sign up or if you just want to see if Patreon is going to be a fit for you, I do have a free colored pencil lesson over on Patreon or actually no, I take that back over on my website that you can watch now that is free just for checking out. For this one, I am working on an 18 by 24 inch Frederick's Nature Core Mixed Media Paint Board. These are extremely, extremely smooth. So given that I, I did have a lot of detail, that I did airbrush that background, which we clearly skipped over, then having a really smooth canvas, really nice. That's why I went with this one. And just for transparency, I am sponsored by Frederick's. So for the background, I just painted it a solid gray color and then airbrushed my pattern. I used a stencil and airbrushed that over. Now I am using masking tape to tape off where my shelf is going to be. And I want to make it a little bit lighter in the background. So just to create a bit of depth so that it looks like it's a little bit further away. I mean, obviously it's not a super deep shelf, so you only need it to be so deep, but I did make it a little bit lighter if you look at the back of the shelf or top technically versus what it looks like as I move my way forward. Now here, I'm just trying to get a very streaky side to side motion so that any streaks that do show just look like they're a part of the wood grain. And I'm mainly using unbleached titanium white along with the same brown tones I had mixed for the shelf. Nothing here has to be perfect. I'm going to paint stuff all over this, so it's not a big deal if I realize, oh, I don't like that brush stroke or the way that that way it wood grain looks. I can go back and change that later, paint something over, or just add to it. At that stage, it's nothing to really worry about everything being perfect. So here for the frame, I did the same thing. I used masking tape and went ahead and filled that in first with unbleached titanium white. Now I'm going to sketch in the lines so that I've got some detail there I'm using my ruler to get semi straight. I don't need it perfectly straight for these shadows because I do want to have a sort of aged look to this frame, but I want straighter than what I would get on my own. That's for sure. So I'm using that ruler just to make sure I am at least moving in a straight line. I don't have to worry that all of the lines are the same width. It's okay if part of that line is a little thicker, parts a little bit more thin. That gives it, oh wow, I can't talk. It sticks with that aged look I'm really going for here. Now I'm going to go ahead and just sponge in or kind of dab with that brush this messy look like it's all chipped and messed up. Apparently I like things that are messed up much like my ability to talk. Now you don't want to leave it here because look how flat that looks. Watch what happens when I come through with highlights with unbleached titanium white. 
suddenly now it starts to have depth because I've got the shadows have to come through with the highlights. When you're painting, everyone wants to get super hung up on, I just need to know the right color. If I knew where to put the right color, how to mix the right color, my work would look realistic. Really, that's not it. Your contrast and your values are what is going to make a difference in having your work look flat versus like this where it has a lot more depth. And there, what you just saw me do is just airbrushing a bit of a shadow under the frame and shelf. But going back to your, if you want things to look more realistic, if that is your goal, get the contrast. Your light's light enough, your dark's dark enough. Pay attention to where those shadows and highlights are because that will make a bigger difference than most everything else in your work. So here, I am drawing my roses in and I that pop-up that you just saw, that window, that was what I had done initially. I drew everything out on a piece of tracing paper so I could use transfer paper to transfer my image onto the painting. And the reason that I do that is that I don't wanna have to keep redrawing the same thing over and over again with acrylics. I don't like to just draw the whole thing onto a blank canvas and try to paint around it. Your areas like the background um, where the, the wallpaper is or where the shelf is, you're not gonna blend that smoothly if I'm trying to paint around a rose and paint around a fish, it's so much easier with acrylics to build up in layers the way that I've done here. So in this case, I built up first my background, that grayish color, and then airbrushed the pattern that I wanted on top of it by using the stencil. Then I painted the shelf. I didn't try to paint around where the roses were going to be. I just painted the entire shelf like nothing was sitting on it. Then I'm going to add my additional layers on top, but I'm just going to slowly build up until I get everything to look how I want it to. Now, if I were painting in oils, that's different. With oils, I typically will draw my subject and paint around it. Oils dry slow enough that it is practical to go ahead and paint around your subject. With acrylics, it can be done. It's just a lot more difficult. And if you want things super smooth, I do recommend build up in layers, paint the entire canvas, whatever the background is, then paint whatever is in front of it, and then what's on top of it. We layer this way, and this will help us to get that smoother finish for the background or whatever things are sitting on in this case. So with the roses, the reference photo that I was using, it's one that I took myself. I have I have dried roses all over my studio. So that is what these roses are for for from. Gosh, still can't talk. That's apparently not going to improve. But I've I'm letting them be a little bit blotchier, a little bit more texture in the way that I'm letting my brush strokes show. I'm not trying to have everything perfectly blended. This letting that texture show helps to create that look of slightly aged, well in my case completely dried out roses. I mean, I didn't want the, the painting to look completely dried, but I did like that aged look. Going through and adding some highlights here. I'm using a liner brush there. That is a synthetic hog-haired liner brush. Now I'm going to come back through with some shading. So I've got a bit of orange mixed in with the pink there. And I'm going to layer on top of layer on top of layer until it looks how I want. One of the biggest mistakes that I often see people make with acrylic painting, or really any art, it doesn't matter what medium, is calling something finished too soon. Just because color is on the canvas, that does not mean you're finished. Keep layering until it looks like how you wanted it to look. If you look at it and you're like, I don't like it, something's wrong with it, then you're not done. Keep layering. And with acrylics, unlike colored pencils, we do hit a stage with colored pencils where you can only layer so much. With acrylic painting, you can layer all you want. If you have a bad layer, you didn't mess anything up. You're not done yet. Just keep layering. And letting those previous layers show through actually ends up adding a bit more texture, a bit more depth to your work, which is nice. That That's a good thing. So those bad layers help you out in the end. So with the clownfish, with him, notice how I painted him a light color first. I went with transparent, or I'm sorry, that is not what I went with. I went with unbleached titanium white and then titanium white for the white stripes just so I could keep those separate. But I needed to use an opaque color first. If I tried painting the yellow or orange right on top of the gray background, I'm just going to be doing what we would call a glaze. The, these colors are very translucent. So I would just be tinting the color this ugly yellow color if I paint, tried painting yellows and oranges first. So that's why I have to paint an opaque white tone first before I put my yellows and oranges anywhere. That's something that you want to keep in mind. And especially with Liquitex Basics, which is the acrylic that I, I generally use, those are very, very translucent, which is a good thing for me because I like to work in glazes and in layers and let those previous layers show through. But sometimes when you're working with some of these colors, you need to get a base, an opaque base layer before you start painting the reds, oranges, yellows, those ones especially. 
Now I'm going to paint the water inside of the frame here. And I'm building this up in a sort of U shape so that I can get some depth to that water. I'm using a mop brush, or in my case, it's actually a powder, a blush powder brush to blend out most of the streaks there. Got some airbrushing to get the rays of light coming down. Now for the sea turtle, this section was done in the live stream. I will have a card pop up so you can watch that done in real time if you want to see how I got to that stage. But I did the same thing that I showed earlier where I took my, my tracing paper where I had drawn everything out initially, positioned it back, and you want to go with tracing paper so you can make sure you get everything positioned right. But I used the, the tracing paper, taped it back over in place, and used transfer paper to transfer the turtle drawing onto the canvas. Now you can just take a white charcoal pencil. Don't ever use a graphite pencil, by the way. Those lines will always slightly show if you paint in layers like I do or with translucent paints. But you can technically just draw your turtle or draw your subject onto the background. If you're gonna use that, use a white charcoal pencil. I like the one by Generals. The problem is if you have to do a lot of erasing and correcting, you can end up with a, a bit of a mess from erasing drawing, erasing drawing. And the white charcoal pencil does erase all the way, but it still can be very messy. By drawing it out, on the tracing paper, I keep my work very, very clean as I go through. I've already done all of the erasing and sketching and all of that mess happened on a separate piece of paper so that I don't have to try to fix anything like that on my artwork itself. Now, as I build up the turtle here, I wanna make sure that I'm getting a lot of different tones in all of these little sections on his fins and on his shell. They're not just one solid color. So I'm just gonna keep working back and forth, getting the browns and the light tan colors. Now I'm using unbleached titanium white with my liner brush to go ahead and separate all of these. A Little bit more detail there. And then I did the same thing. I drew out all of my fish onto my tracing paper and then used the transfer, transfer paper to get it onto my painting. And just like before, see how I painted these guys white first. They are going to have red on the back end of their fins. And if I just painted that red over the blue, I'm just making a dark purple. It's not going to be nice and red. Now this guy, same thing, like that upper fin needs to be yellow. If I just paint yellow, I now have a green tint. I don't have yellow. So I painted him white in those areas too. Going to do the same thing with these yellow fish up here. Paint them white first. Let that paint dry completely before you put the color over it. Now that the white is dry, I can go ahead and start painting the red on the back of these fish. Let those colors smudge together a bit. What I'm doing here, while the red paint is wet, I add more white paint on the front and then a clean brush to just smudge those two colors together a bit in the middle. So I've got that soft transition between the red and the white. You don't want to over blend. I'm not trying to turn this fish pink by blending both colors completely together. But by taking a clean separate brush, I can just smudge that a bit and get that nice wet into wet soft transition. And see, now when I paint the yellow over the powder blue tang here, that yellow really stands out nicely. If I just painted that yellow over the blue, you're not going to see it. We've got to put the white down first. Some more detail on the little firefish. Now watch when you're when you're painting. Don't outline everything with black. This was something I used to do all the time. Cartoons have outlines. Real things do not. I mean, this is surreal, so it's not super realistic. But you don't want to go through and get outlines. If you are struggling to make, let's say, this fish, if it's not standing out enough against the background, then you need to hype up the contrast. Don't add an outline. Either in this case, if these guys weren't standing out enough, I can make them a bit brighter and the background a bit darker or the reverse, depending on what colors you're working with. But if you can hype up the contrast between what's next to it, so your subject's really light and your background is a nice light medium tone, make the background either lighter or darker than the subject to separate them. Don't just depend on outlines to separate your subjects. I really want one of these guys in my tank eventually. Little cardinals. Someday, not yet. 
I'm gonna add some shading with purple on the underside of them. These guys are a silvery color and then the black, but I like to pull the blue in there because that silver kind of reflects the colors around them. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm pulling a lot of those background colors, those blues and purples from the water into the fish. And I really like painting fish that do have a lot of color like that, where they're technically white, but you can pull all of these colors. So like a copper banded butterfly fish where you've got those white stripes. I'm going to paint those white stripes purples and whatever colors will reflect what's around it. That's going to give it a beautiful tone. Remember, white isn't normally white. White is very reflective. So you're going to pull in colors from your background into whatever that is, whether you're painting a white rose, what colors are in the background? Because that, that's the majority of what your rose is going to have in it in a lighter tone of course, but it's not just going to be flat white. So with this little guy, these colors are fairly opaque because I have white mixed in with them. So I didn't just paint solid white first. I'm going to need to do another layer there. You want to let it dry in between your layers. If your layer that you just did isn't quite dry, maybe dry to the touch, but not 100% dry, and you put a layer on top, it can lift the previous layer. So make sure your paints are completely dry before you layer on top of it. Here with those orange spots, I had to paint them white first before I put the orange on. Otherwise, the orange is just going to make a muddy color on top of the blue that was under it. So here is the Aquashella logo. I just wanted to make it look kind of gold. When you're painting gold or anything metallic, you really want to watch, watch your contrast. It's not so much the color you choose as it is your contrast. You're going to have super high contrast between your lights and darks, and that's what makes it look shiny. So with this guy, I've got a starfish using it to hold up that logo, or starfish using his leg to hold up that photo, I should say. Photo, not photo, logo. Still, I am getting worse with words. You'd think I'd get better over time. No, it's getting worse. Get some highlights on that starfish. and some shadows. I'll paint the inside of this section of the logo, a few more details. Then I'm going to paint some fish in the background. I'm not going to go through and paint any details. I wanted those to look like they were far off in the distance. So it's just a darker color of blue from what I already had there. And some bubbles. And I do have a video showing you in detail how to paint bubbles like that. I will have a card pop up so you can check that out. So here is my finished painting. This one was a ton of fun to work with. It's actually the sister painting to the other Aquashella painting that I had recently done, which is a fitting way to, to word that because these two paintings were done for two sisters. So here is George. This is Coralfish 12G here on YouTube. He is one of the people who put on Aquashella. And these paintings he wanted done for his mom and his aunt. And they love your artwork at Dallas. So you and I set up a surprise for them. We got you guys some paintings by one of the best artists here at Aquashella. Um, They're custom. I was sent photos of your home. So I've been in, like a stalker, I've been in your house. So, you know, he's sending your photo to strangers. Just say, you might want to talk to him about that. So, so now you're glad he sent you photos. Your photos to strangers. Thank you. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. So nice. Thank you, Georgie. This boy. He's a good son. For you. For my aunt. Joplin, Missouri. What do you think? You guys got matching uh, paintings. That is just absolutely Isn't it us? Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week.